please welcome celebrity hair designer Daniel Johnson. Daniel, welcome. Thank you for, uh, for coming on Extra Time. Thanks, Andy. Brilliant. Um, before we get into the people's hair, mainly the footballers' hairs that, that you cut, yep. um, you started cutting hair at the age of 12. Tell us about that. Yeah, I mean, I started cutting at the age of, of 12 for a reason, because um, when I was that young, I, I wanted a certain look, and I found that when I was going to uh, a few barber shops, they couldn't actually do the style. So that's when I decided I've had enough. I'm going to go and get some clippers. And I actually started, I started cutting my own hair. And then um, I started doing friends and family. And then slowly, slowly, the word started getting out. And my mum's household became a shop. And she wasn't too happy about that. But um, I said, mum, yeah, I've got this. And uh, it went from family and friends to me actually taking my garden chair, the bathroom mirror, and having a barber shop at the age of 16. So I didn't really, I went straight from school to a businessman. Yeah. And um, from the age of 16, <coughs> um, I built up a, a reputation in my area and it started going outside of my area. And I started attracting uh, championship players from the from age of 16. And um, most of my hair designs were sort of very unique. It had a, um, a Daniel Johnson's signature look, and that look it kept my, it kept all clients coming back mm. for repeat cuts. So after a while, I found that I started getting these odd text messages. Dan, can you come to the hotel? So after a long day's graft, I'm thinking that's a bit strong. Like <laughs> I've just done eight hours graft, but now straight from work, I was going to a hotel, and then it went from one hotel to another hotel. And this was players. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, what I found was most of my clients were coming back and they were saying to me, I scored a goal last night. I'm like, no way, like, Dan, that cut you gave me, wow, it was just, <laughs> it was crazy, you know? So um, it's, I started getting the recognition, not just from the players, but they was getting the feedback. And for me, it's about making my clients look like they're on a red carpet. Yeah. So as you know, uh, players, when they walk out on the field, what do they do? Represent their badge. So I started to see there was a pattern where if a player didn't have a cut, they didn't feel like they wanted to play. And for me, I had to put my whole energy into a Pacific style and make them feel uh, almost like they're wearing a crown on the field because a lot of football teams, it's, it's sort of boots, a uniform and you're not allowed to do things. So hair's the only option for them. So then it becomes a style on the pitch. Yeah. And it's like players are actually battling who's got the best hairdo for that game. So it was back and forth, uh, back and forth. And uh, in between me doing that, um, behind the scenes, I end up having from one, uh, from one shop into four shops and this shop actually started with 86 pound to my name i actually um i signed the contract with no money i was yeah. 16 years old i had tony and guy beside me i had other barbers on the other side i was a young kid with a massive shop no shop sign no barber chair no nothing <laughs> and <laughs> it went from it went from me having that to actually having a brand of four shops traveling up and down the country and in demand so, naturally, some of my players went to the Premier League and that's where it's, it's now going from a crowd of a few thousand to, you know, millions of fans around the world yeah. tuning in, watching games. So now I'm thinking, wow, I'm seeing my haircuts on front page magazines. I've done things for uh, GQ, Esquire um, and the National Press. Yeah. Um, you were you were um, sort of a, a stylist or sort of a consultant to Levida, yeah. weren't you? Sorry. When you were you were a stylist yes, yes, or yes. to Levida. Yeah, um, that come across with just me. Just um, I say, hair's a lifestyle, and it's the old accessory, which is fact. Who's going to go to a wedding and not do their hair, male or female? Yeah. No one. So because my name started building uh, around the press so forth and so forth, I started attracting attention from magazines and the video was one of them. And um, so far it's going really, really well. Mm. 
and um, I've got my own little section in there and I'm just giving tips of um, not just men's grooming but on um, style, how to dress, how to look good on a night out. Come on then. Field. That's what you reckon. Your swag right now, I'm, cool. I'm feeling it. The brown shoes, the slim jeans and the blazer. I actually like that look. It's, it's, it's spot on. It's spot on. <laughs> it's Lisa, come on. <laughs> yeah, cool. Oh dear, brilliant. He's like an old man, very Oh, what do you mean an old man, very <laughs> 39, 39. <laughs> uh, and, and it's amazing because from, from you starting at 12, all self, yeah. basically self-taught. I'm self-taught, I haven't gone to college, no one showed me how to do anything. I've just in the bedroom on my own from a young age. And I think what, is, uh, what actually inspired me was that uh, having my shops and I had young guys coming to me, they all cut the same. Yeah. So that tells me there's something wrong in the hair industry because if everyone's cutting the same, who's unique? Mm. So when they come to me, I said, listen, I know you've been in college, you trained here and there, but it needs to be magazine sharp. There's a difference between a five pound haircut and a haircut that costs whatever the price tag is, yeah. because obviously there's more effort put into it. And the fact that um, where I'm doing people in the public eye, when they're getting snapped in the press and they're in magazines, that's my work. So if I've done a bad job, Yesterday, that's the end of my career, just like that, because yeah. it's, it's, it's such a small world. You're as good as your last haircut. Exactly. It's just like a player scoring goals. If no one ain't scored in six months, no one's interested, yeah. regardless who you are. So, you know, it's the same as um, it's the same as in my field. So there is slight pressure because I know as soon as I do a haircut and they walk out in front of millions of fans all around the world, I mean, sometimes on my social media, it goes mad. You're this, you're that. If no one don't score, I'll give you an example. Some of my players that don't cut, this is facts, that don't have a haircut and they go to a game, I don't know why, they do not score. <laughs> when they have a haircut, they go out, their whole attitude is different and they yeah. bang goals because that's what happens. So again, it's a uniform. It goes with the football kit and it's part of their... Um, I say a haircut is a massive part of your confidence. I mean, like if we sit in the room now and there's five guys Say Force had a haircut, you'll find them guys at the bar, yeah mate, all right, da da da. But the one who hasn't, you'll slowly see that his confidence is a bit, it's yeah. not, yeah, because he's thinking, that guy there, his chest is out, his shirt's on, it's all slim fit, it's all razor sharp around here, but my hair's a bit, he goes a bit quiet, he's in the corner. And I see these things and I think that in men's grooming now, I'm, I'm quite happy that guys are shaping up their eyebrows, having a sun bed, take, like taking extra care um, manicure, pedicure as yeah. well, because women have done it for years and they're, and, they're, and they're praised for it. And years ago, a guy would never dream of having a shaped up eyebrow. The, the banter he would get, <laughs> oh my, imagine that, like a top guy with shaped yeah. up eyebrows. Yeah. Oh, they're yeah, going to yeah, kill him. Yeah, you wouldn't have said so that. change them, it's on, they're, they're hammering yeah. you. But now, oh, who done your eyebrows? Oh, sick, 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 I have to go there. Yeah. Fake yeah. tan, it's, it's all part of the way forward. So for me, I'm glad to see that. Because and, and, and Lisa, obviously you, you work with, with a lot of the players in the world yeah. of real PR. Is, is that something that you talk to, to the players about if they're looking a bit, a bit scruffy and that? Would you suggest like you know, going to, to Jan, oh, Daniel Twiddle? I recommend him, but um, yeah, I don't think I could probably comment too much. To be fair, most of them, um, as you say, I think it, it's partly an image thing. They're in the public eye, they're yeah. on TV they want to look good but also um, I know a lot of players who will probably talk later in the show about their superstitions and you know I was talking to players last night and they were talking about they put the left boot on before the ride yeah, 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 or yeah. you know they all yeah. have certain styles yeah. about what they wear and touching the chest and room wall and all these stuff <laughs> things yeah. and yeah. hair a lot of them have told me hair is a big part of that it's, it's huge it's yeah. huge and also um, what goes in the in the wash bag is important because it's hair again yeah. I mean look when Ronaldo had done that it was a, I wouldn't even say it was a cheeky move, but he walked out one way, he went in the change room, and all he done was, all he literally done, he flicked it up, and it was pressed the next day. Ah, oh, he changed his hair twice in a game. <laughs> he just moved his hair from one side to the next, but it goes to show you, again, yeah. it's, a, it's an it's image. 
The whole world's world watching. watching every mm -hmm. single yeah. move. And the young lads like like to copy, don't they? I know yeah. that. Um, well, um, we're coming up to the end of uh, the first half. We're off yeah. to discuss uh, where we're going on our holidays this year. <laughs> and, uh, and then we'll be back uh, talking more uh, about hair-raising stories um, very soon. And if you'd like to get in touch with the show, then please email extra time at bigcentre.tv. But for now, it's half time on extra time.